Advanced Financial Accounting OneNote Practice Problem. In this presentation, we're going to work a practice problem in OneNote related to mid-year purchase of controlling interest. In other words, in prior presentations, we had consolidation problems and we always assumed that the purchase that led to the consolidation happened basically at the beginning of the year. Now we're going to think about, well, what would happen if the purchase took place sometime in the middle of the year? How would we account for that? in the year of the consolidation get ready to account with advanced financial accounting here we are in OneNote. if you have access to OneNote, you're not required to have access to OneNote. this will be a presentation but if you'd like to follow along and you do have access we're going to be in the 1038 section we're in the section problem presentations we're going to go over the information for the problem first we'll take a look at all of that information then we'll pull pieces of that information as we go through and work through the practice problem so we have a mid-year purchase of the controlling interest so once again we're going to say that the purchase, the major thing here is the purchase is taking place not at the beginning of the year, but sometime in the middle of the year. So we're going to have to account for that when we think about our consolidation process. The purchase, in essence, is going to be taking place after the first quarter. So we had the first quarter go by, then the purchase took place. Controlling interest will be taking place at that time. Therefore, we're going to need some kind of sales information for that first quarter time period. So this is going to be the 2000XO, the year that we will be working with. This will be the year that the purchase took place. And at the end of the year, that will be the year that we will be consolidating as well. First quarter of information. This will be the quarter before P actually purchased anything. So we have Q1 sales at the 244,000. We have the Q uh, quarter one. That's what we mean by Q1. Expenses at the 184,000 and the Q1 quarter one dividends, the 13,000. April 1st, 2020, P, the parent company, now purchases percent of S, which is now the subsidiary company stock. And the purchase percent was 85%. So we've got an 85-15 breakout at that point in time. However, it happened in the middle of the year. We're going to be doing the consolidation at the end of the year. And we got that first quarter which, where P, parent, wasn't involved, didn't own any stock. So the cost was the 265000 That's how much P, the parent, paid for the 85% interest after the first quarter of 2000X0. Fair value of the non-controlling interest is going to be 135000 The shares outstanding, 100000 Par value, 1 Originally issued at $6. The differential is going to be goodwill, so we will have a differential calculation, and we will apply that differential to the goodwill. Uh, the S retained earnings for 2000X0, so this is basically the statement of retained earnings in essence. We'll also see this information in essence on the trial balance. Beginning retained earnings is going to be the 145000 net income 170000 the dividends the 36000 for the year. 2000X0, then we've got the retained earnings at the end of the year then being the 279000 the equity method is what is being used by S in order to account for their investment in P. So now we're going to be considering entries for P to account for their investment in S. In other words, the equity method. So remember that the parent company came in after the first quarter in 2000X0. And now we're going to think about, well, it's the first year of that of that we're still going to do the consolidation as of the end of the first year so we should be able to kind of back into or do one year's worth of calculations to see what p the parent company would record using the equity method for their investment in s over here we've got uh, some basic trial balances for p and s this is the parent and subsidiary this is as of the end of the year so this is as of the end of the year, the time period that we will be consolidating will be the end of the year. The purchase took place in the middle of the year or after, right after the first quarter. And if we're considering the P's books, then we're looking here to reconstruct. We're not going to post these journal entries, but we want to see how P came about using their equity method. This number for the investment in the subsidiary, the 838, 950 and the income from S at the 93,500. So let's use our equity method to do so. So first of all, they made the purchase, right? They in, made their investment of the 765000 Nothing different, nothing unusual here because in our data up top, I'm going to scroll all the way up so we can see it. The 765 is how much they actually paid for that 85% interest. So therefore, we would debit the investment account on P's books. That's going to be included in this number. Other side, we're going to say is going to cash. 
And then the next transaction we have is typically going to be the transaction allocating out uh, the income. Down here, we see the income at the 170, which is going to be the sales minus the expenses for S. Now, normally we would allocate that out if it was for the entire year to the controlling interest percent, that being 85%. However, in this particular year, S came in at the middle of the year, right? So that they came in at the middle. So we have to think, all right, well, how are we going to account for that? We've got the income of the 170. We're going to do a little worksheet down here to, to do that calculation to get to this 93.5. So we've got the income, the net income of that 170. Then we're going to take those Q1 numbers. Those Q1 numbers, this was in our data that we have the Q1 number sales, expenses, and the dividends. So we're going to be pulling out the Q1 sales and the expenses. So the sales minus the expenses for Q1 is going to give us the 60,000. There was a net income, 60,000 for Q1 or quarter one, that being the quarter before P was involved. He wasn't in the picture in Q1. So we're going to pull out the net income for that time period. So then we have the net income to be allocated after we pull out that 60,000 to be the 110,000. Then P takes their percentage, which is going to be the 85%, which is now allocated to them, which is the three quarters. Now, after the first quarter, when they weren't there, the three quarters has the 110 net income times the 85%. That's going to be that 93,500, which P will put on the books to reflect their investment in S, to reflect their income, their equity interest in S, that then increasing the investing in S account and the income from S account down below. Then we also have the dividends. So the next item, I'm going to scroll down. We have these two. These are the same two journal entries we just did. That, that, and then we're going to look at the third journal entry that would typically be related to the dividends. So you have a similar process with the dividends. We have the 36,000 of the dividends that would then partially be going to P. However, uh, P and normally P would take their percentage of it if they were there for the entire year they would take their 85% however if there were any dividends that went out before P was involved then of course those dividends didn't go to P so we have to account for that difference so we're going to say all right the total dividends were 30 let's take let's pull out the trusty calculator here and I somehow this I moved this with the buttons somehow so let's pull out the trusty calculator we're going to take the dividends of the 36,000 and then we're going to subtract out the first quarter dividends that went out that didn't go to P. P didn't get their share of those dividends because they weren't there at that time. So we're going to take out the 13,000 that happened in the first, first quarter. That gives us the 23,000. Then we're going to multiply it. And I'm going to say times the uh, per percent for P, which is the controlling percent, which is the 0.85%. That then giving us the 19,550. So we have our standard journal entry then for the equity method related to the dividends, that being a debit to cash, 19,550, the credit to the investment in S account. If we were to add these up then, and notice this one up top should be cash. Let me just adjust that here. Okay, we fixed that now. Just a bit of an error from our esteemed editing department. So that should be uh, cash here. So then if we think about these and like add these up and say, okay, let's reconstruct what's on P's books with reflecting or reflecting S's uh, activity. We've got the investment in S here, the investment in S here, the investment in S here, that adding up to the 838,950. That's how we're getting to this number. So that can help us to then do our elimination entries because, of course, when we do those, this number will then need to be eliminated. And then we have the investment in S uh, here. That's going to be the bottom line number. That's our income statement number at the 93,500. That too needing to be eliminated when we do our consolidation process. So now we want to consider the calculation of goodwill. So we're so we'll go through the calculation of the goodwill here and we have the compensation from P. So here's how much P paid for their 85% interest and they paid for the 85% once again in April right after the first quarter. That was that 765,000 which we saw up top this 765,000 and we, we saw it in our data all the way up here at the amount that was purchased for the 765,000. All right, scrolling all the way back down. Then we have the fair value of the non-controlling interest also given in the data at the 135,000. So if we add those two up then, that's going to give us the total fair value, the total fair value at the point in time the purchase took place, which is April 1st, uh, right after the first quarter. Then we're going to compare that to the book value, the book value of the subsidiary. 
We're going to be looking at the, the common stock or the equity section. I'm pulling this from the equity section to the right. This is going to be S's or the subsidiaries trial balance as of the end of the year. The equity section, common stock has not changed throughout the year. So that's the same as the beginning of the year or the end of last year. Same with additional paid in capital. And same with retained earnings because retained earnings is beginning retained earnings in the trial balance because we have not yet closed out dividends or the income to it. So these three numbers then are going to be representing basically beginning equity or last year's ending equity representing, representing as well then of course assets minus liabilities or the value as of January. So then we have the additional paid in capital, the 500,000, the retained earnings, the 145. So these three then are going to add up and tell us what the balance was as of the beginning of the year or the end of last year. But then we have that first quarter that we need to deal with. So the first quarter, we had the Q1 undistributed earnings. So let's consider those. I'm going to scroll back up to our data up top here, where we have the Q1 data. So we've, we're basically now at the book value as of the end of last year. Now we got to add the first quarter of the current year to it. So we had income in the current year, same calculation we saw a, a little bit ago, a little bit ago. And that's going to be 244,000 minus the expenses 184,000. That's our 60,000 net income for the first quarter. Of that 60,000, 13,000 dividends have already been distributed. So we're going to subtract, then this would be increasing the equity. Then we're going to decrease the equity by that 13,000. That's going to give us our 47,000 change. So then adding in the first quarter, the activity of the first quarter, we're adding back in that 47,000 to get to our book value of these four numbers being the uh, 792,000. So now we're going to compare the book value as of April 1st, the time of purchase 900,000 to the total, uh, the total fair value to the total book value as of that point in time, goodwill then being the difference of the 108,000. So we've got goodwill that we're going to have to deal with here as the differential of 108,000. All right, next thing we're going to do is, is start going through our consolidation process. So we're going to start with the standard process, which will be we have the parent company, the subsidiary company. We're simply going to line those trial balance CZs up and then add them up. So we're going to total them up to the right. That represents That is represented in this column. Then we're going to have our consolidation or elimination and or elimination entries here. These will include all of the transactions up to and including the current journal entry that we will be working in on to get to our ending basically consolidated trial balance. So we're going to go through our standard kind of beginning numbers here. We're, well, first of all, we're going to do our, our beginning tra transaction here is going to be to remove the first quarter information. So we're going to have to remove the first quarter because... Uh, the, remember the first quarter isn't reflected in P's equity section. It's not reflected in the investment account or the income account because of course uh, the parent company didn't have a controlling interest until after the first quarter. So what we're going to do to account for that is we're going to say, okay, let's take the sales information into account again. Let's reverse the sales that happened in the first quarter. So the sales are on the books, of course, as a credit, uh, we're going to debit them to reverse them. We're going to do the same thing for the expenses. So the expenses are on the books as a, as a debit. We're going to do the opposite, a credit to reverse them. So the sales have a credit balance, we debit to reverse. The expenses have a debit balance, we credit to reverse uh, those items. And then the dividends that already went out, dividends have a debit balance. 13,000 of them went out in the current quarter. We're going to reverse that out as well. The difference then is going to be going to the retained earnings. So this is kind of a new thing that is going to be happening here we're kind of reversing out you can think of it as basically reversing out the temporary accounts expenses uh, sales and dividends into and to the other side going to retained earnings for that first quarter posting this out then sales then decreasing the sales item here pulling out the first quarter sales to decrease the sales the dividends then de uh, decreasing or let's take the expenses decreasing the expenses are posted here to take them down then we've got the dividends the dividends going down as well being posted here bringing down the dividends then we got the difference going to the retained earnings there's that 47 uh, thousand that 47 thousand that we took into account up top when calculating the goodwill the 47 thousand uh, then going to the retained earnings so there is that then we're going to think about our first, like our normal first journal entry, which is basically removing the equity section. So now 
we already have this is what we just did the one up top is what we just did that is included as is the current journal entry we will be working on in the consolidation entries here so what are we going to do now we're going to say the investment account is going to be a credit i'll get back to the investment account in a second to do the calculation so we'll be back there at in a later time then we got the common stock same process with the common stock so here's s's common stock we're going to remove it to get back to p's number there's nothing in there for p p's is pretty not too much activity going on with p over here so we're going to say uh re we removed it so that's going to go down back down to to zero or to p's number the additional paid in capital same thing standard process it's on the books as a credit we're going to do the opposite thing to it a debit and then that'll remove it basically bringing it back down to p's number then the retained earnings is something that's going to be a little bit different now right because we we did an adjustment basically to the retained earnings so the retained earnings now if we if we looked at s's books we're at the uh 145,000 so we got the 145,000 and then we've got this adjustment of the 47,000 so I'm going to say plus the 47,000 and that's where we're getting this 192,000 so we're taking into consideration the prior adjustment in it to get to that 192,000 so here's the retained earnings beginning for p here's s's uh retained earnings for the entire year here's the total and then we made an adjustment of that forty-seven thousand in the prior journal entry now an adjustment of the 92 here that then does bring us back to where we would expect to be brings us back to basically p's number the 970 reflected on the parent company books over here then we got the dividends declared so the dividends declared are going to be down here similar kind of thing with the dividends we have the uh, the dividends on the books at the 36,000. We already adjusted them by 13, so I'm going to say minus the 13,000. So this adjustment is going to be for that 23,000. Then on the dividends, when we record this, here's the dividends for no dividends for P, dividends for S. Here's total dividends. We basically of in those two journal entries here and here have now removed the dividends back to the dividends for p's books which of course is is nothing in this example problem so we end up in the same place but just note it's a little bit little bit different with those two journal entries that we have involved so then we could take the income from s the income from s uh which is going to be that uh, 170,000. normally we would take the income that 170,000. We'd say 170,000 uh, times the 0.85. But we can't do that because the first quarter income, you'll recall, wasn't, isn't included. You know, we didn't come, the P, the parent company, didn't come into the picture until after the first quarter. So let's see, we have our data up top. That means the difference here is the 60,000, the 244,000 minus the 184 thousand first quarter okay something funny happened there 244,000 minus the 184,000 is the 60,000 that portion that net income for the first quarter is 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 going to be removed first from here right so I'm going to say okay here's the 170,000 minus the 60,000 so now we're at 110 of the 110 I'm going to say that times the parent portion the 0.85 and that'll give us the ninety, the uh, ninety-three thousand there. So when we post that out, that'll take us back down to zeros. So that does what we would expect to do. Then we have the non-controlling interest uh, of S, the sixteen five. So similar process. We're gonna take all right that one hundred and seventy thousand minus the sixty thousand to give us the one ten times the non-controlling interest now times 15 percent. That'll give us the 16.5. And then we have the non the, the non-controlling interest in NA. So now we have our, our same kind of process basically here where uh, this, this middle component now is going to be allocated out between the non-controlling interest and the, the controlling interest. So we could calculate that a couple different ways. I could say it's going to be like assets minus liabilities, 939000 minus the 60,000 will give us that 879. We can get the same thing by adding up the equity section for S, which is the 100,000 plus the 500,000 plus the 145, 
thousand minus the thirty six thousand plus the nine hundred thousand minus the seven thirty thousand that's going to give us that same 879 if we add up the middle component here it should give us that same 879 so we'll say the 100,000 plus the 500,000 plus the 192,000 minus the 23,000 plus the 93.5 plus the 16.5 so there's that same number if we multiply that number times the 0.15 we get this one down below and then if we multiply that number, let's do it again. 100,000 plus 500,000 plus 192,000 plus 93.5 plus 16.5 minus 23,000 times 0.85. We get that 747,150. Next journal entry, we're going to scroll on down. This is what we have done thus far. We've got these two entries up top. Those are included in the consolidation entries in this column, as well as the current entry we will be doing. Now we're going to be putting the goodwill on the books. You'll recall that we calculated the goodwill to be 108,000. Let's see if we can scroll up and find that very quickly. Here's the 108,000 calculation for the goodwill. That, of course, now is going to be put on the books as is the same process for goodwill problems we have seen in the past. We'll put it on the books with a debit. Then we've got the other side going to the investment in S and the non controlling interest. In other words, in, in essence, the uh, balance sheet side of the controlling interest and non-controlling interest investment in S and the non-controlling interest in the net assets. We're breaking those out through the controlling non-controlling interest percents being 85, 15, 105, 108,000 times times is that times times 0.85. That's going to give us the 91.8, and of course that 108,000 times the 0.15 will give us that 16.2. So then if we put this, if we record this, we've got the goodwill, goodwill being recorded right up top, increasing that goodwill. We've got the investment in S being recorded here, uh, and that takes it down to zero. So that's where we would expect to be at the end of the process. And then the non-controlling interest in the net assets will be here. It's included in this number. At the end of the process, we see that the, non, the investment in S is now at zero. The income from S is now at zero. And basically the equity section here still does represent basically P's equity se section, although we had to do it basically with a kind of a, a two-step process uh, rather than just that one, you know, first type of journal entry that we have seen in the past.